Everyone loves software updates. There are three new features coming to Xbox and a bonus feature that's gonna make gaming in general just a lot better. One of the best things that Microsoft does, in my opinion, is that they update the dashboard and Xbox software roughly once a month. And when they do this, they tend to drop new features or quality of life enhancements that just make the gaming experience just a little bit better. And through some insider builds that have gone out through various rings that the many Xbox has, uh, we can start to see a picture of what's going to be in the next update. And there are three substantial updates, or I should say quality of life updates that are going to make things a little bit better. And this week, Microsoft also announced a pretty big just general gaming update that's going to make playing games more than likely on the Xbox, but definitely on the PC even better than it is today. So let's just dive into what's coming. So Microsoft announced, you know, starting from the, the least uh, interesting to the most interesting, a new recommendations area within settings. Now, this kind of sounds really boring, especially because it's within settings, but I think the point of this is, is that setting up your console is a little bit more complex these days than it used to be, where you just plugged in your RGB cables and there you go. When you have things like Dolby Vision and HDR and screen calibrations and everything else, actually, walking through all the steps necessary to get the maximum amount of value out of your Xbox is important. Specifically, I think what Microsoft might be trying to address here is the, the coveted, or I should say, terrifying HDMI 2.1 cable, because while one does come in the box, not everybody is using that cable for reasons I don't quite understand. And so if you have a TV that can support high-end features like Dolby Vision and HDR10 and 10 Plus, and you don't have the right cable, that can be holding you back. And I suspect that setting it up uh, going through this recommendation setting that Microsoft is configuring, that is going to be how they address things. Also, they might talk about things like, hey, wired is still better than Wi-Fi, that sort of thing, getting your account all set up and uh, just making sure your Xbox is set up to the brightness and the screen width, you know how you can do the little sizing things, is going to be part of that. Now, a more interesting one, moving down the pipeline of what's coming new, are new power option details. And so you can take a look at this image here, and this is going to become really important. If you aren't really, if you've like been living in a cave and looking at the walls for a while, you may not be realizing that power, especially in Europe, is getting very expensive. So turning things off in the background can actually help you save some like real serious dollar dues, depending on what you're paying for electricity. And so in the general power options, Microsoft is now giving a lot more details about how much power is being used and the benefits of choosing either sleep or shut down. Now, this is not necessarily going to be something that people are going to go, wow, or whatever. And it's like pretty obvious, hey, shut down is a better way to save money. But not everybody honestly knows that and may not know the difference between sleeping and shut down and how much money it can actually save them. Especially if, imagine if you're a house and you have, uh, and you're lucky enough, I should say, to have multiple Xbox consoles, putting them all on shutdown is actually a pretty smart move. And let's be honest here, my friends. The Xbox boots up pretty darn quick these days, like like really quick because you got the, the velocity architecture. You've got a, a powerful CPU in there. It's not like the old spinning rust days or EMMC storage days or reading from a cartridge days. This thing boots up fast. So honestly, for most people, like shutdown is probably a pretty viable option. Now, keep in mind that it may not support things like downloading in the background and some other like modern functionality, if you will. But again, if you're in an area and you're trying to save a few dollar dues, this is a really easy way to do this. And it's smart of Microsoft to like really like one, just make these options accessible, but two, make them easy to understand. And so that is just a nice thing thing that they are doing. Now, one of the other things that are coming and this gives me big hope because my friends, I love game DVR. Let me, let me, let me qualify that. I love recording when I do great stuff. I think most people know you can smash the Xbox button, hit X and record it. Or if you're lucky enough to have one of those fancy controllers, but they're obviously not using an elite controller to hit the share button and make everything nice and easy to save. The game DVR experience currently is suboptimal to put it nicely i think that would be the the appropriate nice way to put it now in the latest update to the alpha insiders microsoft says on the xbox series s and x sorry xbox one uh game dvr captures at 720p and 8, 1080p now experience up to a 30 percent increase in bit rate now that is good and i'm happy to see that but what, what what tickles my fancy here is that if microsoft is once again looking at the game dvr fingers crossed toes crossed everything crossed across all your favorite stars or whatever the microsoft is actually now revisiting the game dvr experience and they're gonna make it better they're gonna give us the options we want the quick edits, the quick uploads, the improvement to quality. And so that is what actually really gets me excited about this is that the game DVR is finally getting some love and attention that my friends, it so sorely 
needs. Now, those are three features that are coming, but there's a bonus one here. And this bonus, I think, is actually a bigger deal, generally speaking, for the gaming community than these three updates that are coming to Xbox. Now, I would tend to believe that this update is actually going to come to the Xbox as well. But Microsoft this week started talking about Direct Storage 1.1. Now, 1.0 is already out there. But 1.1 is coming. Now, the, the primary benefit of direct storage was the data transfer speed. This was important for things like the velocity architecture inside the Xbox. And of course, on Windows 10 and 11 drives, when you have a high-end NVMe drive, those things can move a lot of data really fast. And so direct storage helped developers take advantage of that if they opted to include that sort of stuff. Now, the next step in direct storage is GPU decompression. Now, this is a big deal because Microsoft believes that this is actually going to help include improve frame rates and a lot of other things as well as loading times and things all of that nature. Now typically decompression work is done by the CPU but the CPU my friends these days is quite busy. It's got even though they've got more cores and more threads than ever the CPU still isn't the optimal piece of hardware to be doing decompression work. That my friends is the GPU and if you haven't noticed the GPU has really grown in transistor count and has really grown in its basically muscle especially like the 490 ti is off the charts and I don't, I don't, another video i don't think most people need the 490 but the, the point stands that modern gpus have a lot of capacity and they're not always being used so gpu decompression can actually remove that bottleneck from the cpu and say here you go gpu you take it now what type of benefits are you going to be able to get from that? They're actually pretty substantial, actually. According to Microsoft, they were noticing that scenes that take advantage of this decompression technology are loading up to nearly three times as fast. Now, there is a qualifier to that. This is Microsoft's test that is optimized for this experience. So this is, I, th I think it's safe to say, a best case scenario that you're going to see up to three times the performance but let's just pretend you only see 2x or one and a half x times performance that's still pretty substantial for what should be relatively hopefully not too much of an issue for developers to include in their applications and more specifically in this case games so if developers can start putting this into their optimization stack like yes we will put direct storage 1.1 in and that will help us optimize our workflow and our, our game development stack this could be a pretty easy and i say quote unquote simple win because microsoft's done the work it's up to the developer to implement which does take effort it's not like you just drop a line of code in or, or, or a library and, and it automatically works there is some work that has to be done now the nice thing here is that microsoft says hey actually we're going to be bringing this technology to windows 10 and 11. so if you're on windows 10 you will be able to take advantage of direct storage 1.1 it's a kind of a win for windows 10 users that being said microsoft does claim now they don't give a ton of data why specifically they say there's optimizations in windows 11 that windows 11 is what's needed to see the full stack of performance but if you have windows 10 and you don't want to update to windows 11 you will see benefits from direct storage 1.1 one so that is good news and even better news microsoft says direct storage 1.1 will arrive in general availability by the end of 2022 so we don't have to wait too long we don't have to wait too long i think we're going to wait a lot longer for developers to take advantage of it because again direct storage 1.0 is still not as widely as adopted really the adoption is slow uh because again developers are cautious about adopting new technology when you know the money's on the line all that being said is that it's going to be coming down to them to adopt this technology and implement it. But the first step is Microsoft actually getting it out. And I would be curious to see where Microsoft actually implements it first. I think a natural fit in place we would all love to see Direct Storage 1.1 show up would be Flight Simulator. Again, I love Flight Simulator. It is a fantastic game. I play it. I like to point this way because my Xbox is over on the other side of that wall. I like to play Flight Sim on my Xbox Series X. Yeah, I'm not a true hardcore Flight Sim. I use it like an arcade experience. I love the landing challenges. Don't hate me for that. But that, I think, is a natural place for Microsoft to start implementing Direct Storage 1.1 because Flight Simulator is a beefy, beefy game. So if I was crossing my fingers, maybe they'll get it. Maybe we'll get it there. I'm not so much expecting it on Halo Infinite, but we will see what else Microsoft has up its sleeve. So there you go. The quick rundown. Game DVR is getting some love. We're getting better power options, and you're going to get some new advanced settings uh, configuration, a little hand-holding there, a little OOBE, if you will, coming more than likely, I would guess, here in the next update, which should be dropping in the next few weeks, typically is how Microsoft would do that. So they drop one major update per month, and so that should, uh, you know, that should be coming in the next Xbox update. So, 
If you want to stay updated on everything else in the world of Xbox, Microsoft, and beyond, make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this channel is me.